Hello everyone, we are here again for financial event method part 6. In earlier 5 lectures or 5 parts we were discussing about in part 1 the basic steps or basic 9 steps in financial event analysis. Then part 2 we discussed about the forming the global stiffness matrix. In part 3 we were discussing about applying the boundary condition for specially st structural problem. Part 4 we were discussing about applying the boundary condition for heat transfer problem and part 5 we were discussing about the node numbering and finding out the orientation of each and every element for plane truss problem. Now in part 6 what we are going to cover is this common mistakes in financial method by students. This is uh, Six common uh, mistakes which I have found out while say, delivering the lectures and taking examination for finite element course. So, what are these five? Uh, say, uh, basically six most uh, say uh, mistakes, and I'll also give some recommendation and how to eliminate these particular common mistakes because if you are going to solve finite element method or for any class of problem you are going to follow certain steps and there are many steps so generally students forget some step or bypass or uh, say present one step which is uh, which need to be followed as step number three they follow at step number five so what are these we will explain in details step number one is bypassing the step step two discretization and element numbering step three distorted stiffness matrix error fourth applying boundary condition on kg only then directly presenting the final results then solving only the half part of the question what is mistake number one bypassing the steps bypassing the step means while prob solving any problem let, let it be this particular simple beam beam problem you need to follow nine steps what were this what were those steps firstly discretize the element then find then uh, perform the no element numbering then node numbering then find out the local stiffness matrix for each element then assemblies of those stiffness matrices then find out the nodal displacement vector then find out the external force vector then assemble those three parameter k u and f on say that particular formula that called k u is equal to f this would be capital f after that applying the boundary condition then once you have applied boundary condition some uh, rows and column was reduced so uh, representing that reduced matrix then converting them to the, uh, those matrices into the equivalent simultaneous equation and applying approaches like gauss elimination kramer's rules to solve those particular problem and then finally find out the step especially the nodal displacement at each and every node after that if uh, as a question asks then about finding down the finding out the secondary variables so clue is that while performing or solving any class of problem may it be structural thermal or heat you need to follow those nine steps sequentially because you are using a particular method and method has steps you are going to bypass any step in that case your marking or your solution or the particular variable which you are going to uh, calculate at the end that is not going to be say uh, original one and if that is not going to original one it means that you have you have uh, say solved that particular class of problem using wrong wrong steps so you need to make sure that you are uh, exactly following nine steps then what is error number two it says discretization and element numbering error it means that if any problem is given generally student what they do that they discretize this particular element on random basis for example they discretize this element as only one element or some student what they do they element one element two and element three they solve or they discretize on basis of these either only single element or three element what they uh, what they are uh, the understanding their understanding is that if they have discretized that they had uh, say completed the step number one but that is incorrect 
if you are going to discretize this particular element then you need to take care that the external force in in this particular case is applying at middle of this particular beam so you need to locate at least one node at a point of application of force otherwise this particular force value is not being considered into your this particular vector global force vector if it's not being considered that it means then your particular solution for this particular problem especially beam is incorrect secondary while solving these heat transfer problem generally they discretize into only one or two element and they try to figure it out the temperature because especially in heat transfer problem a particular cylinder or bar is given left end is maintained at a particular some temperature right end is either maintained at a particular temperature or or it is in contact with the flowing fluid now if we heat is supplying from left end your objective is to find out the distribution of temperature at any intermediate point so if you are going to find out intermediate temperature at any particular point then you need to discretize as many number up as possible generally it's recommended that for uh, solving the heat transfer problem you need to discretize minimum for four element because if you are going to uh, discretize for four element in that case error would be minimum and you can at least locate two intermediate point if you are going to locate two intermediate point because one is left and one is uh, right end and you have located two intermediate point it means that chances of error is very minimum so for discretization and element numbering error a uh, uh, clue is always locate a particular point on the uh, point of application of external force for structural problem for heat transfer problem at least discretize your particular domain into minimum four component then it be, it is going to be correct or at least uh, close to the exact solution or approximate solution then error number 3 distorted stiffness matrix distorted stiffness matrix means for this particular problem you need to for example we had one node of uh, element 1 element 2 now node numbering element, node number 1 node number 2 node number 3 now i need to find out what k1 k2 this is k1 for locus stiffness matrix for element 1 element 2 every time you will be having some value ei by l cube then this particular matrix then again ei by l cube then this particular matrix what generally student do that if these parameter especially the length of this particular element at this element of this particular element is say uh, uniform or exactly same in that case this ei by l cube is common for both element but in another case if your uh, this location of this particular point in this case the length of element 1 is suppose 1 meter and length of element second is 2 meter the stiffness matrix k1 and k2 will be going to be exactly or very much different because the value of l is 1 for first element and this is 2 2 for element number 2 it means that while assembling the local stiffness matrix into global sense what you are doing that you are exactly exporting each and every element from this local matrix to the global it means you need to consider this particular value why because this particular ei by l cube is common for each and every element it means if you are taking this particular element from this location to the global stiffness matrix you need to multiply every element of this particular square matrix with this constant that then import to that particular value okay so this is uh, say error number 3 you make sure that you are uh, each and every time you are multiplying the constant or ei by l cube with each and every member of stiffness matrix especially lo local stiffness matrix while assembling or forming the global stiffness matrix now error number 4 error number 4 is applying boundary condition on kg only this is in direct relation with error number 1 that says bypassing this step bypassing this steps means you are you are not exactly following nine steps but you are uh, following five four or three steps many times student like solve particular problem using three steps only they are like their process is correct their solution is also correct 
anyhow but they are not representing that how they come to this particular solution if you have not uh, you are not able to present that how you have gone from step number 1 to 9 then you you will not going to get say more than 50% of that marks because you are using finite element method and method has certain steps you need to show that how you have come across that this is the common issue they have formed the global stiffness matrix k global and then applied the boundary condition on that particular uh, global stiffness matrix but in reality we have already discussed that you need to uh, you need to formulate this equation k global then this is square matrix k global then load displacement vector then f once you have formulated this matrix now you are applying boundary condition on this particular matrix how boundary means the element or node which are fixed you are able to figure it out only on element or say column vector u because u is zero for a particular element why zero because that point is either fixed or any other case so you if you are having for example you are having a simple bar okay let's suppose this is a beam you are applying a particular load this particular point in that case if this is element 1 element 2 element 3 this is simple bar in that case your size will be 6 cross 6 uh, you will be 6 cross 1 and 6 cross 1 why 6 because it is it is b uh, bar sorry beam and beam has degree of freedom two at every node one is displacement vertical displacement and one is rotation term v and theta it means to at this point, to at this point, to at this point. Means it means total six. Mean your matrix is six plus six. How to apply boundary condition? One is fixed. It means now you need to remove element. So row number one and row number two, corresponding column number one, column number two. Why? Because this is unknown variable. This is v one. This is theta one. If it is fixed, then it its value is zero and zero. Because we know the value of v one and theta one is zero. That is why we are eliminating L row row number 1 and 2 and row column number 1 and 2 not because it's already understood that the element number 1 fixed that is why we have removed the uh, particular element from global surface matrix so always take care that you need to apply only the boundary condition after you have expressed this equation where k is global surface matrix use nodal displacement and f is global force vector now error number 5 Error number 5 says directly presenting the final results. Till now, you have applied the boundary condition. Once you have applied boundary condition in this case, 6 cross 6, 6 cross 1, 6 cross 1. You have removed 2 rows, 2 column. It means your reduced matrix is 4 cross 2, 4, 4 cross 4. If your matrix is 4 cross 4, 4 cross 4, let me write over there. Four plus four means four plus four is square matrix. Then four plus one and four plus one. Now you need to present this particular matrix into the reduced form. Then you need to apply these method, either Gauss elimination approach or Cramer's rules or the, or any other method which you know to solve any algebraic equation. Because once you have formulated this square matrix, column vector, column vector multiply this square matrix with this column vector equate with that particular rows you will get first equation then second equation third equation and fourth equation there would be one two three four this four equation it means four equation four unknown to solve four equation four unknown you have this method you need to explain that how you have performed four equation four uh, four unknown operation otherwise you are again if you you have not you have formulated this equation this format format and then directly presenting the result you have bypassed the steps bypass the step it means you have not followed this step and your marks will be directly reduced to 50 percent or 60 percent then error number six error number six that solving only the half part of the question many times in question is all already given that you need to find out at least one primary variable than secondary variable Pri primary variables means for heat transfer problem primary variable is nodal temperature at in intermediate node for structural problem the primary variable is finding out the displacement at each and every node the secondary variables are like for heat transfer uh, sorry for a structural problem finding out the 
elemental stresses and finding out the reaction force for structural problem heat transfer problem finding out the heat flow rate at entry and exit or any other point so always try to or make sure that you are reading the question in com, uh, in full sense full sense means always try to figure it out at the initial or very first st stage of this uh, for solving the FEM problem that whether it is asking only the primary variable or secondary variable too because if it is asking primary variables for example if your question is 15 marks it is asking that uh, find out the global displacement sigma and the action force it means that you are going to t uh, get 10 marks for solving this particular problem then 2 marks or 2.5 marks for this and 2.5 marks for this if you have solved only u it means maximum marks you are going to obtain out of 10 not 15 so do not uh, repeat this mistake or uh, how to mitigate is that only make sure that you are reading the question in flow uh, full now at the end in summary these are the six common mistakes which majority of students i would say uh, around uh, in in a class of 190 or 192 i have uh, like come across that at least more than 80 students around 50 percent making mistakes either any one of these mistakes or more than one so bypassing this step solution is follow all those nine steps discretion and element numbering error always make sure that you are taking at least four element for heat transfer problem and always consider a node at a point of application of force it distorted stiffness matrix error Solution is that while forming the global stiffness matrix, always take or multiply this constant value for each and every element, then export it to global, uh, step, uh, global stiffness matrix. For applying boundary condition on kg only, do not repeat this mistake because you cannot apply boundary condition on k global. You need to apply boundary condition on this k is equal to f where u is unknown. You are only solving where u is equal to 0, you are eliminating this rows column. For directly presenting final results, for uh, say to mitigate this particular error, always explain that how you have come across this four equation four unknown um, in the equation form. Then you need to explain which particular method you have used. At least you need to mention, uh, uh, give at least three or four steps. Then present your results. At the end, solving only the half part of the question. It's very important because uh, it's very common that generally uh, you see the majority of questions only you is uh, you need to you need to find u only or primary variable and for heat transfer only t but make sure that whether it is asking for secondary variable or not if it is asking for secondary variable make sure the you have uh, computed all those particular primary and secondary variables in this way starting from lecture 1 2 3 4 5 and common mistakes part 6 i hope that you would be able to solve Simpler problem either in plane dress, beam, spring or combination of beam and spring or heat transfer especially in one dimension either only conduction or heat transfer conduction plus conduction. At the end, wish you all the very best for your final examination. Thank